Today we're going to work on the lawnmower some more. Take my handy dandy little gas operated air blower and blew the leaves and stuff off the driveway. I haven't even begun to pick up limbs and leaves out here in the yard. I think I'll just drive around with my mower and pick up what limbs I can and and then mow these leaves right into the dang ground like mulch. Raking is way too hard for me. Today let's talk about Walter's limited mechanical abilities. First let's open the garage. Well, today I'll talk to you a little bit and ramble some while I replace the fuel pump on this Sears riding lawnmower. It's downhill here. I have to be careful it don't roll away. I'll have to chase it. I can see right now that's all the hose I got left for fuel pump, fuel line, so I can see right now I didn't buy enough. I'm going to have to go to the auto parts store and get some more. One quarter inch. Fuel pump we're going to replace and I've already bolted the new one on here. Right here. I haven't hooked it up yet. The old fuel pump. Here's the old fuel pump. It's made out of metal. When I went to the lawnmower repair place to get one, they sold me that plastic. It says it worked just as good. It says, as a matter of fact, these metal ones cost more. And I imagine there's probably a kit you could get to rebuild that. Somebody's going to tell me, yeah, you could have rebuilt that. Time you buy the kit and stuff, you can buy a whole new dew bunker. This fuel pump here. Probably was only about 20 bucks. The fuel line coming from the gas tank that I hooked up, I've got it coming out right here. I secured it with a zip tie. I think I got it where it won't rub on none of the levers and stuff up under there. We're going to put a fuel filter here and another line the other side of the fuel filter coming to this intake on a fuel pump right here. This hose you see here goes down to the carburetor. We're going to have to take the cover off the carburetor to replace that hose. But they all, all these fuel lines on this thing feel real stiff and they shouldn't. They're supposed to be soft rubber. In one of the old ones here. When they get stiff and dry like that they crack. You wind up with leaking. Now this line goes right here to this one, hooks up over here to the crankcase, right there. So I've got enough fuel line for that one. And then from here, fuel filter to there, i got enough for that one. But I'm not going to have enough for this one going to the carburetor came close. I bought six feet of it. I should have bought seven or eight. That's what we're going to be working on today. To go any farther, I'm going to take the hood off this thing. It's just a matter of unpulling this wire, tilting it at about 45 degrees where it'll lift past that bracket, and lift it off there be able to get to it a lot more, a lot easier. Well, I don't know how that bracket got bent in the front there, but we'll straighten that up before we put it back on there. Probably from jacking this lawnmower up at one time or another. We will go ahead and take the cover off the carburetor while I'm right here at it. Do that, you take this outer cover off. We're working on a Kohler, Kohler Command 22 and a half horsepower engine. Take that off, and we'll take this air filter off, which is dirty. I either need to clean it or get a new one. I think we better get it running before we worry about buying more parts for it. Yeah, 
Check field results. Looks like we got to take this housing off to get to the carburetors. Looks like a matter of two bolts there. I think that's all that's holding it, just them two bolts right there. Yeah, that's going to be all. We'll take that off in a minute. Probably already go ahead and buy me some fuel line, but I'll go ahead and hook up this fuel pump. I'll have that much done in case it comes up a rain. We gotta store this where it won't get lost. Need to get out my other toolbox, but I probably got everything I need right here in this. I've got several toolboxes, and how am I working out of a junk plastic box? Too lazy to go look for the proper wrenches. Pair of pliers for them clamps. I think that's all the parts I need right now. Talking, I mentioned my limited mechanical abilities. I was trying to decide which way to put this. Makes sense to me that you should be able to see the fuel before it goes through the filter. You wouldn't want to filter inside the filter, so it's got to go that direction. That was, oh, here we go. I was wrong. It was this direction. There's an arrow right there. And I was fixing to put it backwards. I don't know. Let's see, what do we want to use? One of these clamps or a hose clamp. Since this is a device that gets periodically changed out, let's make it easy. We'll reuse these old clamps rather than go buy new. I don't know, I guess it started when I was a kid. My dad came home from work one day to find out I had disassembled his push lawnmower. He didn't have riding lawnmowers back in them days. We used to have a lawnmower you had to push around that manually made the blades turn and twirl and cut the glass grass. When you got one with a gasoline engine on it, it attracted my attention. I said, I'm going to learn how to repair these booger bears. So when my dad came home from work, I had completely disassembled his otherwise perfectly good running lawnmower under the carport by the house. I mean, if there was a bolt on that lawnmower or a part, I took it off. And he drove up to the carport. carport and I had pieces of lawnmower laying from one end of the garage to the other. He used to say he weren't too happy. Boy, you better put that lawnmower back together. That was the start of my mechanical days. When I was in the Navy, specialized in damage control and one of the things we had to do was maintain the fire gasoline operated fire pumps pumps that would pump water straight out of the ocean to a fire hose they sent me to small engine repair school it only lasted a couple of weeks it was just enough to teach you the basics I think I might have put my zip tie too low, but let's see. I 
anyway, I got out of that small engine repair school, came back to the ship. I was on a minesweeper at that time. Down in one of the workshops, somebody had been working on a P60 fire pump. P60 was a little small engine water pump that would pump 60 gallons a minute. It had a small gasoline engine on it. I think it was a red. I had never seen one before, but there it was in that workshop. Some previous sailor had been working on it and had it all took apart. I'm going to put all this stuff back together. See if I can get this pump running. I worked on it for a couple of days, putting everything back together. Drag that thing out on the fan tail of the ship. No, in short order, I had that book of air up and running. Well, the next thing I know, they had me working on boat motors, anything but any kind of little small motor that say, I bet Parks could fix it, go get him. All right, we're going to hook. Let's see. Let's see, maybe it goes in that right there. Looks good anyway, don't it? Push it back a little bit so it don't have no strain on it. We're going to cut that blue bear off right there. Yeah, we're not going to have enough. Had a small, I don't remember what brand it was, had a small outboard motor on a little small boat we had on that minesweeper. And we used it for running back and forth to shore when we needed to. It was too much of a pain to drag out the motor whale boat, which is a big 15 man craft to haul people designed mostly when you're abandoned and ship. I don't like that clamp. Well, what the heck, it works. Anyway, what I was driving in, on that outboard engine, had something wrong with it, I don't remember now. It was something wrong with the carburetor system or something, and I figured out how to tinker with it and get it running. But I was the only one that knew how to do this little special trick to get it running. We were on a little island down in the Caribbean called Curacao, Curacao, something like that, or a yacht race representing the U.S. Navy. Yeah, I had the duty that day, I suppose, to stay with the ship, but the captain said he wanted to go to shore. All right, got out the little boat, and I tinkered with a carburetor to get it running, carried him to the beach. He said, you'll be here when I get back at 10 o'clock or whatever. That was a mistake. He got back. I was there all right, but I had had a bit to drink. I think we were drinking rum. And I couldn't fix diddly in my inebriated condition. And they couldn't get the boat running. They propped me up over in the corner somewhere and Finally had to row all the way back to the boat. I didn't earn no friends that day. All right, Booger Bear, listen, you got to do better than that. Get up on there. I 
Okay, that's going to be good enough. Anyway, I, my, as far as mechanical abilities, I've always been kind of a shade tree mechanic. When it comes to repairing things on my lawnmowers or my cars, I usually try to tackle it first, or always did when I was in better shape. Some jobs have got to be quite dexterous. Like changing spark plugs nowadays. They made them so hard to get to, it's a pain in the tail. But I've always looked at it from the aspect that if I can't fix it, then I'll go hire somebody to do it. And when you do accomplish repairing something, it gives you kind of that manly feel and you know, ah, I fixed it myself. There are times when you get something took apart and you decide, whoops, I should have got an expert for this. And then when you have to go pay somebody, you don't have to pay them anymore, it'll be the same amount anyway. You know, you did tinker with it yourself. Okay, this line here is a pulse line going to the crankcase. I'm going to have about four inches left over. We lived, first got married, we lived in a mobile home park for a good 10, 12 years. Well, actually, a little longer than that. And people in the area learned I could repair lawnmowers. Next thing I had people bringing them to me. I would, nine times out of 10, get their lawnmower running or at least find out what was wrong with it and tell them what they needed to get done. Hooking up this pulse line to the crankcase. When I repaired people's lawnmowers, it usually turned out to be something simple like spark plug or dirty carburetor. Uh, sometimes it, they would be out of time, and the way you get a lawnmower out of time is to hit something real hard like a stump or something sticking up the sidewalk, the blade to strike it in inside the flywheel on the small engine is a, a shear pin, a slot key, whatever you want to call it. That keeps it exactly in the right place so when it passes the magnet on the flywheel It'll know when to fire electricity to the spark plugs. And when they hit that and it shears that pin or knocks a little off center, it's not top dead center anymore and it doesn't fire at the proper time and it won't run. To repair that, you got to pull a whole flywheel replace that thing. Sometimes an engine would stump me. And the boy bring me a, I don't remember what kind it was, but it had a little mini bike. Somebody had give it to him, it was completely disassembled, and that boy completely reassembled it himself. Made me think of me, but he said, I can't get it running. Well, we'll figure it out, there ain't much can go wrong. It's either getting no fire or no fuel. I checked everything, it had spark. And every time I'd take the carburetor off and clean it, I cleaned it two different times. I'd take this little nut out of the bottom and lay it down. It had a little pinhole in it that I didn't see. It took me a while to find that. When I got that pinhole cleaned out, it ran like a champ. He was glad to get it fixed. But you learn a lot of things on the job from 
as you go. You don't know until you actually do that kind of work. I'm going to change the oil on this thing pretty soon. Okay, we got the pulse line hooked up, the fuel line hooked up, the new line to the tank. We'll make sure it's not hidden back there anywhere. When I go to the auto parts place to get some more holes, I guess I better get a pack of zip ties. I don't have time to drive all the way to tractor supply. You get a good de deal on them over there. Hmm. What about this spark plug wire? I should have had it behind there. It's going to be rubbing right there on that fuel line. We won't worry about that right now. Time to work on the carburetor.